What's up everybody? Welcome back to the garage. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than what we normally do on this channel because we're going to talk about a tool, but it's not a physical tool. It's going to be a digital tool that we can use in our physical DIY and workshop projects. Most of you have probably heard of this tool by now since it's taken the tech world by storm for the last several months. And of course that tool is ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT has been in the news for things like coding and programming and automation, and that's great for the nerds out there, which I will be honest, I'm definitely a bit of a nerd. I've got a server rack and a home lab set up over here to the left off camera. But what about those of you who aren't interested in the tech stuff? What good is ChatGPT to you? And we're going to go over some prompts here that you can use to help you with your DIY projects and workshop projects. Now a prompt is simply what you input into ChatGPT in order for it to give you something back. And they call them prompts, so it's a little more than just a single question. It, you really wanna structure it a little bit differently to get the best results. So with that being said, I've got a couple prompts ready that are welding related that we're gonna use as just kind of a base level starting point to hopefully get your wheels turning and kind of get you to see how you could utilize this in your own projects, in your own shop. And with that being said, let's jump over to ChatGPT and start taking a look at that. So this is the landing page for ChatGPT. So if you type ChatGPT in Google and click the link for it, it's gonna to come to this page might be a little confusing at first, but you just hit try chat GPT down here and it will open this window. Now you will have to make an account for this, but it is free. There are limitations to free, but they're not anything too important at the moment. And I have used this quite a bit, but I do have this kind of fresh and clean for us here today. So this box down here where it says send a message, that is where you will put your prompt. So let's pull our first prompt. I've already got these written because I've used them and messed with them a little bit, but I will copy this over and paste it just to save us the typing and the keyboard noise. So this prompt is, you are a welding project generator AI. Your only job is to give the user welding projects based on skill and complexity. When prompted, you will ask what skill level the user wants for the project and what size project they would like to complete. So with ChatGPT, the more specific you can be, usually the better the results are. So you want to tell it what it is, what it does, and what information it should ask from you before it produces an answer. If you keep those three things in mind, uh, you can kind of really narrow down what you want it to do and get better results than just asking it, give me a welding project. So let's put this in and see what happens. So I put the question or the prompt in. Now it's gonna say, great, let's get started. What skill level are you looking for in a welding project? You can choose from beginner, intermediate, or advanced. So for this first one, let's do beginner. And now it's going to ask what size project we would like to do. We'll type in small. And now it's going to give us a welding project for beginners. We'll let this get done here. And now it's saying, here's a small welding project that is perfect for beginners. Welding a simple cube from square steel tubing, you can start by cutting six pieces of square steel tubing of equal length, then use a welder to join the six pieces together to form a cube. You can add a top or bottom if you wish. This project will help you develop your welding skills and you'll end up with a simple yet useful item that you can use for storage or decoration. So as you can see, this is a very basic prompt. And it took our input and gave us exactly what we were looking for, a simple, small welding project. Now it's not gonna get very detailed because I haven't taught it to be that way yet. And I don't know how far you could really take that. I don't know how if you could get it down to cut by cut, if it's capable of that or not. I probably not, um, but it will give you a general idea. So this is good if you're kind of looking for something to do but don't know what to make, you can come here and tell it what you wanna make. So let's do one more. We'll type in give me a project. So now it's gonna ask us again, what level and what size we want. So let's go intermediate. 
and we'll do a comma medium for the size. So now we're going to get our response back. And it's telling us we can build a fire pit with a built in grill. And then it's going to give us some very base level instructions. So not the best if you want step-by-step -step instructions, but definitely good if you are just looking for ideas for things to make and kind of better your skills. So that's that prompt. So as you can see, you can modify this to woodworking projects or really many other hobbies. So as you can see, you could use this prompt for welding projects. And I've actually, it's funny because I've gotten different results out of this. Sometimes it does give you a bit of a step-by-step -step and sometimes it doesn't. So if you are getting this and you maybe want more of that step-by-step -step instruction, try deleting this and then running it again from the start and see if it gives you a numbered list of materials and instructions. Now, they weren't very detailed. They were very base level, but it still was kind of a starting point, especially if you're a beginner. Um, it will give you a starting point that you can expand on. So let's start a new chat and go to the next prompt. So this prompt's gonna be a little more interesting and maybe a little more useful, especially to the beginners. And that is a welding assistant. So let's jump down here and take a look at that. So this prompt is, you are a welding assistant AI. Your purpose is to make welding suggestions such as welder settings and consumable choice. You use user input to make recommendations. When a user types help, you ask questions like what welding process is being used, the type of metal being welded and the thickness of the metal. So let's get this rolling here and take a look at what it does. This says, hello, I'm a welding assistant AI. How, many, how may I assist you today? If you need help, please let me know what welding process you're using, the type of metal you are welding and the thickness of the metal. This information will help me make the most appropriate welding suggestions for your specific situation. So I'm going to just put in the type of welding we're doing, the type of metal we're welding, and then I'm going to put in the thickness of the metal, just separated by commas is all we have to do. So let's do stick welding, steel, then quarter inch, let's go quarter inch. For stick welding on steel with the thickness of quarter inch, I would recommend using an E6011 or E7018 electrode. For the E6011 electrode, the recommended amperage range is between 70 to 90 amps. While for the E7018, the recommended amperage range is between 90 and 130 amps. I would suggest starting at the lower end of the recommended amperage range and adjusting as needed based on the quality of the weld bead and penetration. It's also important to properly prepare the joint by cleaning any rust scale or debris that may be present. A good fit up and tight fit is also important to ensure a strong weld. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any other questions. So as you can see, we've got some helpful information there. So let's type in help because that's what I told it we needed to do. And this will ask the same thing again and we can put in MIG. Um, let's do MIG steel still. And let's do eighth inch this time and see what it gives us. So for MIG welding on steel with a thickness of eighth inch, I would suggest using a 0 0.030 or 0 0.035 inch diameter solid wire, depending on your MIG welder's capabilities. For shielding gas, a 75-25 argon CO2 mix is commonly used. For steel, the recommended voltage and wire feed speed settings can vary based on the specific MIG welder and wire being used. However, a good starting point for voltage is around 16 to 18 volts, and the wire feed speed can start at around 180 to 220 inches per minute. And it goes over the same prep um, responses. So one interesting thing to note with this, and if you remember on the last prompt, I said that it gave me a different result the first time I did it. This one is doing the same thing because on the first time I did this, it was asking me what type of joint I was welding as well, whether it was a corner joint, a T joint, a butt joint. It wanted to know that so that it could better recommend your settings. So what I would do in this case in order to ensure that would be put that into the prompt and we'll do that here. I'm going to basically paste this prompt in again. And the thickness of the metal, we're going to take out the and there. And then down here, we'll put and the type of joint being welded. 
So we'll run this again. Now this should be a little more specific. So we'll just go MIG for this one. But you can see how this is already kind of answering or asking questions in a different manner. It's now asking line by line what we're doing. So what type of metal you're welding? We're gonna just say steel. Understood, what is the thickness? We'll go eighth inch again, just for because. And what type of joint? Butt joint, lap joint, or something else. So let's do a T joint. Thank you. Based on what you've told me, here are some general recommendations for MIG welding a T joint on eighth inch thick steel. It's gonna give you a recommendation for the wire and the diameter, the shielding gas, wire feed speed, voltage, and travel speed as well. So this one's giving us a lot more information. And so you can see how you can adjust this to do what you need it to do. Now I would go verify some of the things that this is giving you just to be sure that it's accurate, but I would also always recommend using this as a starting point and testing first. So hopefully this video kind of gave you an idea as to how you could use this in your workshop or garage for your DIY projects. It's not necessarily something groundbreaking or earth shattering, but once you have this saved, you can go back to it anytime you want, as long as you don't delete it out. So if you have a computer in your shop, you could have this tab open and you know always be able to hop into it real quick and get some answers or project ideas. Once again, you could modify this to be woodworking if you do that. You could also modify it to other hobbies you may be interested in and, and want a quick reference to or, you know, to generate some ideas for projects and things like that. So anyways, maybe we'll do some more of this. Maybe I'll do a series on building projects that ChatGPT suggests. Who knows? But there's really a lot you can do with this once you start playing around with it. So don't discount it just because everything you're seeing in the news and online is all about the tech applications. There's a ton of applications for this outside of the IT industry. So... Don't discount it, mess around with it. It doesn't cost you anything. Just keep in mind it does have limitations. There are a few more limitations on the free plan. I don't have the professional or upgraded plan. I just have the free one and it's done most of what I wanted to be able to do with it across anything that I've tried it for. Just realize it doesn't really have knowledge past about halfway through 2021. So it's not very good at really current events on the free plan. It's got a cutoff point. But other than that, it's fun to mess with and you can really apply this in many, many ways just in everyday life.